different. Um, how'd you characterize the round today? It was a solid round, um, solid day. I, there were some scoring opportunities in the first five holes, and I was at even par and getting lapped by the guys in my group. And so it was nice to turn it on there. On saw one fall on 15, and then played really well, 15 in, six under on the last 12, I guess, and uh, or 13 holes. So it's gettable right now. Um, probably about as gettable as I remember. That rain changed the course dramatically, and obviously we're seeing that reflected in the scores. So. Um, you know, uh, a lot of times on this golf course, when you're you know, quite a quite a ways back and you shoot a good Saturday round, you move way up. And I I know that you know I did just that, but um, the way it's playing, it's going to be more and more challenging for someone to come from way behind. But tomorrow's going to be windy and uh, maybe dries it out a little bit and and try and shoot another one of those tomorrow and see what happens. I was going to ask you. It's supposed to get actually pretty darn windy out in the twenties. Um, yeah, mile per hour. Is that good for somebody like you that's got a chase tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I want the hardest conditions when you're behind because yeah. you have very little to lose and a lot to gain. So yeah. um, I'll still kind of keep that attitude going into tomorrow, regardless of where I stand, because I imagine I'll be at least six or seven back. Yeah, I know it's an obvious question, but also that aspect. Um, the course is hard, so. How much, how much of it is trying to be aggressive and how much is you still got to be careful? Well, very different tomorrow versus today. I, I mean, you just – you look at – there's four par fives. So that's the first thing you look at is trying to take advantage of the four par fives regardless of how windy it is. Okay. Um, should be able to reach or get around the green in two in all those holes. And then, um, you know, you get an opportunity on 12. You know, there's a few shorter holes where maybe you get a wedge in your hand and, and you can attack. But other than that, it's going to be – Try and find the center of the green and, and go from there. And I, you know, going to need to probably have make a couple long ones or a chip in or something to have a special day uh, when it gets super windy. But um, I'll be I'll be eyeing the hole on every shot. And again, like I said, not a whole lot to lose. And especially with the way my round finished yesterday, I I have nothing to lose. I you know uh, everything to gain. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to ask about that. that. That bounce looking like it could be worth quite a few dollars. Were you able to get <laughs> yeah. in touch with that guy? Yeah. And... He's over there right now. Um, oh, he he's an active Marine. He's, uh, his name's Matt. Um, he didn't want anything. Yes. I spent a little time with him yesterday. He didn't want anything, but I've, and the, I thought if I could do anything for him, try to, and the tour stepped in and hooked him up too. So, um, hopefully he's having a good weekend and his knee, the, I mean, once I found out he's an active Marine, I don't really think hit, getting hit in the knee really does much to those guys. But, um, yeah, I, I, um, I'd like to say once the cut moved to two over, I felt like I yeah. could have still finagled my way through, but it's still two shots that had saved me at least. Mm. Um, and that'll make a difference regardless tomorrow. And then there was some talk last week about, like, a back injury. Are you fine? Totally 100%? Yeah, I, it was weird. On number 10 on Sunday, it just – but then I just swung a little easy for a couple holes, and then it was fine. And, and I got on it uh, this week, and um, it has no issues at all. Yeah, spasm. I don't know. It was weird because my right side's been, but it was the left side, and I just I swung 200 miles an hour at a gap wedge to try and. I remember the shot. Uh, because I didn't want to take any off of one and have it bounce, you know, take the spin off. So um, it was an unusual situation that you really only get at Bay Hill, but or a U.S. Open, but. Um, yeah, I just tweaked it, and um, by Tuesday afternoon, I felt good. So, can, can you talk, can you assess this? You've been on a long stretch, obviously. Can you assess, at least in your own mind, how that stretch has been, and what tomorrow could make? How much tomorrow can make a difference to that? Uh, it's been really good. I, I really feel that since kind of Monday of um, Phoenix is when I started kind of putting in kind of the swing stuff that I've been doing since. And just a little added, added thing that um, I was working on with Cameron, and I felt like it freed up a lot of my wedge play, and, and then I was driving the ball, you know, the same or better. And then um, in this last off week, I did a lot of work um, two weeks ago with Cameron putting, and I putted really well last week as kind of the first time getting into setup and the stroke position that that I'm working on, and this week's just been a continuation it got better each day last week and then it's been better this week so to summarize um this last stretch i'm i'm very um i feel like i have momentum i feel like things are trending um just got to 
days like last Saturday and yesterday, they just need to be even par and not two and three over. And that just comes down to some discipline and decision making, and that's really it. Are you slightly more bent over putting? Yeah, I, yeah, um, I guess so. Um, I'm more like it's more a left arm elbow feel for me than anything, but it, I am getting, and I'm just trying to lock in this left side, and which I may be a little more bent over than when I've been at my best, but the attraction of everything is just to match. You know, if I've my ceiling putting has been best in the world, I have, you know, video I can just match. You'd think the stroke and the feel um, to then, and that's really the goal. Um, there's no reason to try and do anything different than at that time period. And um, it feels really nice and tight. And inside a ten, it's been really solid this week. And um, I've made a few outside as well. So I'm. Um, you always do. Was that the reason for? Was that the reason for the change to be more solid inside? It was more just um, I. I have I've had a tendency for a few years that's been a really bad tendency, and it was a. Uh, trying to continue to find ways instead of just in in a path feel, but actually in a big, I'm, I'm trying to take my hands out and use my big muscles more. I've always been a little handsy putting in a good way. Um, a lot of great putters are handsy. Ricky Fowler, I mean, Tiger uses hands, um, Ben Crenshaw. Uh, so I think I'll always still have that, but I was relying on it. Um, and you I was having to say you, you feel like you lose consistency because of that? If when it goes to too much, for sure, because when I would have pressure on or as I got closer to the hole, I could, didn't have time to make up for um, what was going on in the stroke. And it, it was, you know, I was just putting really bad strokes on it. And now I feel like I don't have to save it. And it's a very freeing feeling. Um, it just needs more and more reps and tournament rounds. And it just gets better. Thanks, Joel. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.